Dear students, we'll start with a new chapter today that is joint ventures. Okay, now before we just move into the meaning, differences and what is joint venture, what is the accounting, everything. I'll just first give you a very small and simple examples to make you understand first now what is joint venture. Normally what happens, right? Normally what happens, See, for example, two friends, they decided to just do a business for a very short while or a particular object. Let me say here, or let me give you the example, ki me and my friend, okay, what we decided, yeah, we'll do crackers business. Dipavali has come. So we decided, yeah, we'll do a cracker business since Dipavali has come. Let's say we had some free time and we decided, yeah, let's do it. So what we both did, we both invest some capital, purchased crackers, sold it at the time of Dipavali. What you did finally? Anything at the end is unsold stock at the end. What we decided either, okay, you take this much, I'll also take this much or maybe we sold it at a discounted value. Maybe next day of Dipavali or something or second day of Dipavali something, we sold it at a discounted price. So by the process, what we did, now very simple, we just say what we sold, what we purchase, what is all our expenditure, right? Finally, what we say, yeah, this is the profit, right? For example, I invested 5,000. My friend also invested 5,000. Profit we made, let's say, 2, 2,000 each. We'll say 5,000 plus 2,000, 7,000 I'll take, 7,000 he takes, business closed. That's called as a joint venture. So what is joint venture, right? Joint venture is nothing but as the name goes venture, we have done a venture, one activity jointly. It is nothing but a short term partnership. The venture over, partnership terminates. The venture complete, partnership terminates. Right? So now if I'll say, let us just go a little one step ahead. Two construction companies. Fine. They are into their individually, they are doing their business. But they, there was a very big project awarded by the respective city municipal corporation. Let's say they have to construct a flyover. And for constructing this flyover, let's say, obviously, the municipal corporation will come out with a tender, right? They'll call for those who are interested people to execute this particular contract. You come and bid for it. So what happened? These two construction companies they decided, yeah, we'll bid for this tender. We'll take off this particular tender. Imagine okay, this particular tender, right, or this construction of this flyover, let's say, which is a worth of 500 crore, one particular flyover construction. And for which the minimum qualification, because anybody and everybody cannot say, I'll come and do construct a 500 crore turnover, I'm sorry, 500 crore flyover. So for which the municipal corporation asks for a minimum qualification. So for the qualification they have mentioned, ki like the person or the company or the entity which is coming forward to execute this contract, they should have at least last two to three years, they should have at least 500 crore turnover. And they must have experienced in similar kind of work. Let's say two company, X and company, Y and company. They decided, yeah, we will do this business or do this particular contract. But individually, they are not satisfying the qualification criteria which is being specified by the municipal corporation. But when they join their hands together, right, join their hands together, obviously what happened? Now they are able to qualify for this particular contract. So now what happened? When two companies of the similar nature, they just join their hands together, right? One might be expertise in one segment, other in other segment. Somebody has the, this, both the company, when they pull their resources together, their manpower, their machineries, their capital, their strength of expertise, when their hands together, join their hands together. Of course, what happened? Now, they will be able to execute this contract and they are now able to qualify. For that, what they did, they just form an entity, they decided we'll invest our so much of money, right? Individually, we'll invest this, this, this amount, 
that is called as the capital contribution what do you call it as the investment initial investment and they'll execute the work do the purchase do the execution incur the expenditure make the bill collect the money everything will do end right what will happen now they are just going to find out what is the profit they have made in this particular flyover construction and which will be shared between both the party and each one of them we don't call them as partner we call them as co-venturers is that clear we don't call them so literally they are nothing but partners only but we call them as co-venturers clear now what happens here is it necessary the construction of the flyover will get completed within three months or six months no it's a very big project which will may run over years together so is it that will wait for the end of three years and then prepare the PL account find the profit and share between x and company and y and company answer is no we will start closing the books of account year on year basis so it is spread across multiple years we'll definitely close our books of account year over year or annually but if it is a short venture as i gave you the example the cracker business or let's say at the time of holy right the holy comes of the color business whatever we do or a particular a event is coming let's say there is a festival is coming up we decided here we'll have this particular stall or let's say there is an exhibition going on we decided here we'll buy something and just put it there just make some sales so those are all called as very short ventures small ventures which get completed very shortly and definitely after each venture we can very much find out how much is the profit and we can share between the co-venturers. Understood? So this is called as joint venture. So how this works, right? How this works? Suppose it is a very small one. What happened? Me and my friend, as we discuss, yeah, he said we decided to do the cracker business, but he said me, yeah, I don't have time. I'll put this much of capital. You please take care of everything. I said, fine, I had time. So what I did, I made the purchase, I make the sales, I keep the account, I manage the entire show, I maintain the record of accounts also. Yeah, what is the problem? Because I have to show him after all, ki what profit we have made. So for that, what happened? I managed everything. So in this case, I'll be called as the managing co-venturer. I'll be called as the managing co-venturer. Right? As I said, let's just line out one or two points here. As I said, the partners, the Partners, those who are interested in this business, the so-called partners, right? We don't call them as partner, we call them as co-venturers. We call them as co-venturers. So, we don't call them as partner. In the partnership firm, we call them as partner. Here, we call them as co-venturers. Clear? Now, as I said, the business started and obviously, suppose between me and my friend, my friend said, yeah, you manage everything. So, I'll be called as the managing co-venturer. Right? Managing co-venturer. Fine. So, what happened here? I'll be managing everything, including the maintaining the books of account. Finally, what I'll say? I'll just call my friend and say, yeah, this is what we have done. This is what the purchase I've made. This is what the sales. Finally, this was on sold was there. I have taken this much. You have taken this much, right? And this is what the profit we have made. This is what is investment you did. Plus your profit, you take, go home. I'll take my investment and a profit, go home. Clear? Now what happened? In that case, I'll be maintaining the entire books of account. I'll be called as the managing co-venturer. The entire things will be managed by me, maintained by me, everything. But sometimes what happened, we decided, yeah, nothing doing. In this case, we'll not have a bank account separately, anything. What we'll do? Let's have, right? Anyway, we are doing everything in cash now. Even if something bank is coming, I'll deposit in my bank account. I'll give you an account to you. I'll tell to my friend. But suppose we decided, the, the example which I gave you, right? The example which I gave you, the construction of the flyover which is 500 crore, right? For which it is a very clear cut concept of what you can say, the municipal corporation. Ki they cannot pay me individually or maybe to X and company individually and Y and company individually. They'll say one entity you decide, whichever the entity will make the payment to it. So there we decided, we'll come out with something called as X, Y and company, which is form a joint venture. 
we form a joint venture and when you form a joint venture through this we and this entity we establish open a bank account everything and what happened as i said we receive the checks in this account we make the payment from this account we maintain a books of account purely this will be called as uh, this will be considered as a separate entity we'll take it as a separate entity so as you are doing a business for a business entity we have to do that now as I said, we have made one account or one name here, one account here. But the example which I gave you between me and my friend, the cracker business, we have not made any company. We have not made any entity. We have not registered any entity, right? We have not opened a bank account in the name of that joint entity. So normally what happens in this case, this is a short term business, small one. We don't require a name for it also because I can just have a cracker store and people when they come there, they don't show you the board there. They see which brand you sell. We have, I procure from all the brands, etc. There's a standard cracker. All these cracker companies are there. We purchase from them and sell it. So what happened here? So please try to understand. It is not necessary. The joint venture business should have a name. But I said it's not necessary. If you are giving a name, if you are making it an entity, it is a joint venture. But it's not necessary, it should have a name. So what happened in this, as I said, to uh, what you can say, X and company, Y and company, both, both are into civil construction. They're joining their hands together for construction of the flyover. For the construction of the flyover. So of course, what happened? They're already into their res respective individual business. They are into construction, they are into civil construction, they are doing their separate business, what they are supposed to do? Apart from that, they are learning their hands together for this particular activity or the venture. And there, this partnership, whatever they have done by joining their hands together, it is only and only for construction of this flyover. Once the flyover construction is over, the partnership terminates. So that's what we call it as we have joined our hands together. Our X and company, Y and company joined their hands together only for this particular venture activity. That's what we call it as a joint venture. Understood? So now what happened? As I said, both are into their respective individual business. Civil construction they are doing. Now they join their hands together for construction of this flyover. So what happens sometimes? Apart from even capital contribution in the form of cash, etc., etc., sometimes even they'll contribute goods also from their stock. Let's say X and company had surplus cement, some thousand bags were there. He said, okay, chalo, let us use this in this contract. Possible. Why and company had thousand tons of steel? What he purchased for his sum of his project, which is getting delayed. They decided, yeah, this project is faster. Let's dump it in this. You anyway, know, after it is their business. So apart from capital contribution, that is in the form of cash, even they can contribute in the form of goods also. Is that clear? Understood? So capital contribution is there. Right? Initial capital contribution they did. Even apart from capital contribution, they will also be contributing in the form of goods also. Is it possible? Absolutely, yes. So, as we discussed here, what is this? Now, it is a short-term partnership. May or may without a name. And the partnership terminates on completion of the venture. And our object in this chapter of joint venture is that we are going to find out ki what exactly the profit in this particular venture and who is the partner eligible for how much share the profit close the business that's what the accounting which you are going to do here as i said the joint venture as i said is a short term but this short term not necessarily within two months three months it can be even multiple years so when it is a month's work or a two months work i can very much wait let the venture get over. I'll prepare the profit or loss statement. What is, I said profit or loss statement, not profit or loss account. We'll prepare the profit or loss statement. What is it? I'll explain you when we'll go for the latter part. So we'll make a profit or loss statement. Find out the profit. This is basically what are you supposed to do. Completed the business. Purchase this. Sells this. Expenses. What we invested. Oh, sorry. Get the profit. What the individual partner they invested. Minus what they have already withdrawn, plus the profit what they are supposed to get, pay them. Pay both the, or all the co-venturers, right, which you call them as the partner, the so-called partners are nothing but the co-venturers. What will happen? We'll just pay them off, settle the account. That's called as joint venture.
Is that clear? So it is a venture. It is a partnership. It is a short term partnership for a particular venture, particular activity. We call that as a joint venture. Now here we go. Now let's just have a look to the meaning of joint venture which is given. Nothing but the example which I said you now. That's nothing but which is form like which is put across in the form of notes here. When two or more person, when there's a person, not necessarily individual, it can be a one individual, one private limited company also, right? Even a partnership firm along with an individual person also can very much also just go into a joint venture. So it is nothing but two persons join together to carry out a specific business and to share the profit and losses in predetermined mind basis, of course. I gave you the example. I said to my friend, yeah, we'll do a cracker business. I have some 50,000 with me. Will you invest something? He said, yes, I'll also invest 50,000. But he said, I don't have time. So of course, what happened? I'm spending my time. I'm spending my time. I'm spending my expertise. My whole day, I'm sitting there. I'm running the business. So of course, in this case, if he comes around and say, yeah, we'll share the profit 50-50, then what I'll say? Yeah, then you have to give me the time what I spend. I should be paid specially or separately. So for that, what we decided here, yeah, we'll do one thing. I'll take 60%, you take 40%. He said, also done. Because anyway, I'm spending my time, my expertise, my selling skill. I'm sending. So for that, we agreed. I'll take 60, 40. I'll take 60, the part my friend will take 40. So it is a predetermined rate. Of course, it is a mutual understanding. So the profit or loss of the business will be shared on a predetermined basis, the percentage which is being agreed upon. It is known as a joint venture. A joint venture is a specific duration business. Okay, it is a specific duration, short term, a specific duration. Fly over, it will take four years. Four years over, right? So again, as I said, the short term, not necessarily two months, three months. It is one particular venture. Let's say four months, four years also. Once the flyover construction over, once the payment we have received, the business settle. We have found out the profit or loss, settle between the co-venturers. And that's what is the joint venture accounting. Then for the generally confined to a single transaction, okay, one particular activity transaction, developing some housing project and selling the same or mining of a particular coal mine. Remember, it is just one or two examples I have given. It can be anything. Further, entered into by two or more persons jointly, which comes to an end as soon as the specific period elapses. So, as we discussed, so as you said, the specific period elapses, right? Or the joint purpose business is completed. And that's called as the joint venture may be described as a temporary partnership. It is a short term or it is a temporary partnership. Why I call it as a temporary partnership? Normally what happens? Any partnership, we call it as a partnership at will. Means what? Whenever the partners decide, they can wind up the partnership. They can close the partnership. They said, okay, we'll run the business for five years, six years. After six years, they decided, yeah, we all will close the business. Possible. That's called as a partnership at will. But coming on to this, you don't have any will. Once the venture over, partnership terminates. Right? It is a temporary partnership between two or more person without the use of firm name for a limited purpose. So I said without the new firm name, when I said there could be chances we can also have a joint venture business can have a name also. As I gave you the example, construction of this flyover. Extend company cannot go individually take the because the job is awarded to the joint venture. So for which we can have. So but normally as I give you the example of cracker business, right? Cracker business where not necessarily should give a name. So joint venture not necessarily it should have a name. Clear? Right? Let's move into the next segment. So what are the whatever I discuss with you now, that is the point whatever I have discussed with you is nothing but the characteristics of a joint venture. Sometimes they'll ask you theory question on this. So write down, okay, some important characteristics of joint venture, five to six mark, right? Could be theory questions. So whatever I have explained to you now, let's put it off in the form of points, one by one. It is a specific duration, special purpose partnership. That's what we discuss now. It is a short term partnership or it is a partnership for a particular venture venture over partnership terminates ready further 
two or more parties come together for a specific purpose and are bound by an agreement, right? Partisan venture called as co-venturer. I have said you already, the parties, nothing but the partners. We call them as co-venturer, right? So, there should be, now listen to me, one thing here. It says, come together for a specific purpose and are bound by an agreement. Bound by an agreement. So, please tell me, is there an agreement? Of course, yes. The agreement, what we agreed between me and my friend, yeah, I'll invest 50, you invest 50,000, I'll manage the show, I'll take care of everything, I'll maintain the account, and finally, we'll share the profit 60, 40. All these are nothing but terms and conditions, which is agreed. Right? If you want, we can put it in black and white. That is in writing. The one which I said you, the flyover, see, the one small example I gave me and my friend with Cracker business, we need not have anything in writing because we understand, we trust each other. But coming on to the flyover construction, which is a 500 crore and we have joined X and company, Y and company joined together and got this particular contract. Do you think it will happen because it is going to run over four years? They have to comply with everything, all statutory compliances, your ESI, your PF, right, Provident Fund Act, your Employee State Insurance Act, your income tax, you have goods and service tax, GST, everything, all statutory compliances. Income tax return need to be filed. So all these things, so everything should be in return. So whatever, the moment you put it off in the form of return, we call it as a joint venture agreement or you can also call it as a memorandum of understanding. So. It can be very much the terms and condition agreed must be either it is oral, fine, as I said, is a very small one, oral you have agreed, but if it is long run, bigger one, higher volume, we go it as in written form, right? So that's an agreed and every parties to the joint venture are known as co-venturers. Further, the agreement between co-venture established joint control. Of course, yes, because if my friend comes and sit, the cracker business, if he comes and sit one fine day evening, he was some time, he came and sit in the counter and he said, yeah, how much sales you have made, how much, etc. If he asks, can I say, you cannot ask this question to me? I cannot. Because we know we are jointly interested in this. We must have a joint control over it, right? Every, so, whatever we have agreed, yeah, who is going to do what, we classify. So, definitely they will have a joint control. The joint venture may or may not have a specific name. I have already said you. The small cracker business, we don't require a name. But the 500 crore construction of a flyover, we have to definitely go for a name. A bank account has to be open in that name. The municipal corporation is going to make the payment to that particular bank account, neither individual to extend company or Y and company. Further, right? So the joint venture may or may not have a specific name. The joint venture may also be created in the form of a company where co-venturers contribute to its share capital. The one which I said, the 500 crore, right? The 500 crore, the flyover, what we have constructed, right? We are what we are going to construct. We can very much make a company. And which we sometimes we call it as a SPV, special purpose vehicle. We can very much make it as a private limited. And each co-venturer can very much come as shareholder there, right? They should have the share in that company. They should contribute. Now, as I said, it can be a private limited company also. Imagine if it is a, it is a use, let's say for example, now we decided to go for a metro rail project, right? The government has awarded the metro rail project to five companies all together. One company is export, in what you can say laying the track and let's say the metro rail has to go underground one company is expert in doing underground tunnel one company is expert in preparing or constructing let's say all the stations metro stations right another is very much expert in doing all electrifications right another so what happened another who is going to manage the entire operation administration segment so all these five companies joined their hands together and decided to go for right bidding or constructing let's say metro rail so what happened they make a private limited company for it and let's project let's say it's going to run for 10 years so till 10 years this business will continue once 10 years over this company get wound up so 
This is what even they can form in the form of a company also in which each co-venturer can contribute their part as shares. Co-venturers may contribute funds for running the venture or supply the inventories from their regular business. Just before this I have said you. X and company, Y and company. They are already into regular business of civil construction. Now they decided to go for constructing this flyover. X and company had 1000 bags of cement. They said, okay, dump it in this project. We use it, start it. Anyway, my project is getting delayed. It's an individual project. Y and company had 1000 tons of steel. He dumped it into this business and they started constructing. So apart from capital contribution in the form of cash, right? Apart from the capital contribution of form of cash, even they can also contribute their share of capital or investment, etc., whatever you call in the form of goods also. Further, the co venture share profits and loss of the venture at an agreed ratio, likewise partnership. Of course, okay, the whole object of this whole like entire activity is to make profit. So there should be agreed, there must be agreed that we'll make this profit and the profit will be, I'm sorry, this profit or loss, not only profit, even the loss also to be shared in this agreed or the desired ratio. Fine, next. The co-venturers are free to continue with their own business unless agreed otherwise during the life of joint venture. Right? As I said, ki like X and company, Y and company, they are already into civil construction. Both are into real estate business. They do construct business or buildings and sell. Or they construct small, small, what you can say, road, bridges, etc. They will continue with their work. Unless otherwise, we feel Ki any activity of the co-venturer will become a competitive activity which may affect the joint venture business we may restrict but normally not. Why? Now we will be doing as I said X and Y or me and my friend. We have our own business, right? We have our own business. We are doing our own thing. Since we have some free time and he has money, I have also money as well as some free time. We decided we will take up this venture. Right? In this case, we don't say, no, 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 to do this cracker business, you have to surrender all your activities, everything, whatever you are doing, leave it up and come back and do this business. We will not say that. But yes, again, if it is agreed, right? Ki what is that? Now, to do this particular, while doing this, I am, we or I or he or maybe the co-venturer, what I said, should not do particular this particular activity. They can restrict, otherwise not. They can continue with their regular other business also. Then, further. Joint venture terminates on completion of purpose for which it was created, as I said, on completion of the venture. Once the venture terminates, the partnership ends, the joint venture ends. The purpose for which it was, what you can say, formed, once the purpose complete, accomplished, the joint venture terminates. Next, generally profit or loss of the venture is computed on completion of the venture. As I said, me and my friend, Diwali over. Cracker season over, we sat and we completed here. What is the profit? Mine is this much, yours is this much. This is what I invested, this is what you invested. You take your money, I'll take my money, go home. Right? But the example which I gave, the flyover, the metro rail, which comes over multiple years. We can't wait for the 10 years or 5 years that will complete the accounting thereafter. And then we will start with, what you can say, then we'll share the profit. No, because you have to pay income tax to government of India. You have to pay the GST to the government of India, right? So we have to do all statutory compliances. So for which we must prepare the financial statement, the profit or loss account on regular interval. On regular interval, that is normally annually. So annual to annual, year to year. Okay, this year what is the profit we have made? We'll prepare a P&L account in the nothing but, nothing but a profit or loss statement will prepare to know what is the profit or loss we have made. So normally, but it is a short duration one. We wait, let this get complete. Once for all, we'll settle the account. But if it is done over multiple years, we close the books of account yearly. And we found out or we find normally what is the profit we have made and share it accordingly between the co-venturers. There is profit or loss. Both should be shared. So it says generally profit or loss of the venture is computed on completion of the venture. However, for a joint venture which is expected to run for a long period, profit or loss is computed annually. So it is going to compute 
annually as i gave you the example of construction of flyover so this is what whatever i this example or whatever i explained you in the form of live example everything the same thing is nothing but the characteristics of a joint venture so to not sell to refresh you what is joint venture it is a short term partnership it is a partnership which is being formed for a particular venture the parties to the joint venture we don't call them as partner we call them as co-venturers is that clear we call them as co-venturers and it is a short term partnership once the venture complete once the activity over the partnership terminates we come to an end the partnership comes to an end right so each party to it is called as co-venturer Profit or loss will be desired or will be shared in the agreed ratio the capital contribution will be done by all co-venturers as agreed they can also contribute, as I said, not only in the form of cash or capital, in the form of cash, it could be in the form of goods also from their existing stock, possible. So these are all the whole thing. So this is what, what we call it as a joint venture. And these are all the characteristics of a joint venture. Sometimes they'll ask you short notes on this five to six mark question, right? What are the important characteristics of a joint venture? Some characteristics of a joint venture. When this says, you need to write it down. So that's right. If I'll just give you by heart everything and write, then you'll start doing the same by hearting what you used to do in your lower standard examinations. But you should not do that here. Once you understand, you yourself can write down these are all the characteristics of a joint venture and what is joint venture. Is that clear? Understood? Thank you.